Close your eyes. Watch your breath. And remember, if anything's going to happen in the meditation, you have to be responsible. Some things will come in unexpectedly. But how you handle them is what's going to make all the difference between whether they're simply distractions or whether they're something you can use in the meditation. Your level of skill is what you depend on. This is what the Buddha is talking about when he says, Atahi atano nato. The self is its own mainstay. Ordinarily, we don't depend on ourselves very much. We try to depend on others. And that's how we started out life. We were totally dependent. And then gradually we develop some independence, some skills of our own. What the Buddha is asking us is to become totally independent. Get the mind so it can stand on its own two feet and not have to lean on other people. So we have the skills of working with the breath, we have the skills of goodwill. Yesterday I was talking to someone saying sometimes it's difficult to decide between the pleasure of ice cream and the pleasure of meditation, because they're both impermanent. <laughs> and I said, well, ice cream is something you've mastered. Meditation is something you haven't. And the meditation is going to take you a lot further, because it requires that you develop skills of mindfulness, alertness, ardency, concentration, discernment. You have to put in all that factors of the path. So lots of skills are getting developed here. The more skills you have, the more you can depend on yourself. The so people who don't have any skills are constantly hoping to lean on other people's skills. But here we're dealing with a problem that's exclusively inside. We can learn from other people about what we might do, but the actual doing is something we have to do ourselves. Because only you can know your own suffering, only you can know your own craving. And only you can develop mindfulness, alertness, ardency in your own mind. So I have a strong sense that you are competent that you're able to do this, and that you're going to benefit. It's called the self as the producer and the self as the consumer. The producer is the one who can develop these qualities. The consumer is the side of you that's going to benefit from them. So make sure that your producer is skillful and that your consumer has some good taste. Doesn't put up with just any old pleasures. Aims at the highest ones, the ones that are most responsible, the most, ones that are most reliable. Because all too many people go through life looking for pleasure in an irresponsible way. They'll take whatever pleasure they get. And if they have good karma, then they tend to abuse their good karma. But you want to be responsible, because you don't want to cause any harm through your search for happiness. Because if you cause harm, then there's going to be pain down the line. You've got to see that. So it's your producer to be skilled and your consumer to be, to be picky, to be demanding. After all, that's the way the Buddha was. He mastered a wide range of skills. He never said, just be equanimous, or just be accepting, or just be this, that, or the other thing in the present moment. He said there are four duties that we could fulfill in the present moment, and it's up to us to decide when we're faced with a situation which duty is called on. Whether it's to comprehend the suffering or to abandon the cause, to realize the cessation or to develop the path. That's quite a range right there. So we have our choices in the present moment. So you want your self as producer to be skillful in choosing, and yourself as a consumer to be really demanding, wants nothing but the highest pleasure. And when yourself has those two sides, then it's a self you really can take as your mainstay. You really can depend on it. 